once again uh, today we are going to see physics laboratory so for this semester you are having uh, engineering physics one actually engineering physics so we are uh, not having one and two uh, only engineering physics laboratory so this uh, engineering physics laboratory is uh, for uh, non dg courses as we know we are having a uh, b naval arc offshore engineering petroleum engineering food processing technology mining mechanical and triply marine so the subject code for uh, engineering physics laboratory is a uh, udph cap so udph cap is the subject code for engineering physics one so this is the uh, syllabus we can able to see here totally 10 experiment so we are having here a 10 experiment so this is 10 experiment we are going to study for uh, this semester the name of the experiment potentiometer by using the potentiometer we are going to measure the calibration of low range voltage so the low range voltage value is measured by the potentiometer experiment the second experiment is a torsional pendulum so here in the torsional pendulum we are going to measure the modulus of elasticity basically there are three modulus of elasticity angst modulus rigidity modulus and the bulk modulus we are going to study the second type of the modulus rigidity modulus here in the rigidity modulus we are going to measure the angular changes the twist in the medium so that we are going to measure with the help of torsion pendulum the third experiment is a surface tension calib <coughs> capillary rise method the method is capillary rise method so by using this capillary rise method we are going to measure the surface tension of the given medium we can use a water we can use a, some oil or you can use a kerosene so we are going to measure the surface density that is the surface tension of a various liquid medium by using capillary rise method the fourth experiment is a newton's ring so this i think we have studied in plus 2 also experimentally also theoretically because in physics laboratory for higher secondary students they conducted this experiment newton's ring and also we studied this experiment in a theory also newton's ring so what we are going to study the newton's from the newton's ring we are going to study the radius of curvature of a convex lens by using the interference pattern the interference pattern which obtained by using the newton's ring or a circular pattern so from the circular pattern we are going to measure the radius of curvature so for the fifth experiment air wedge so air wedge and newton's rings are almost similar because in a newton's ring also in air wedge we are going to measure only the bandwidth so here also we are going to form the interference pattern here also we are going to form that interference pattern so based on the obtained interference pattern based on the uh, just shown interference pattern we are measuring the radius also we are measuring the thickness that's why i informed that the both are similar so here the circular pattern will obtain but here a linear pattern will obtain that's the difference so totally we are going to consider five experiments for first cycle 
for the second cycle also we are having another five experiments a spectrometer with the help of the spectrometer we are going to measure the wavelength of various spectral lines what is this wavelength of various spectral lines the various spectral lines is nothing but various colors we know the colors starts from violet and ends at red with gr colors violet to red so we are going to form the color we are going to form the color with the help of a prism by using mercury vapor lamp so when white light falls on the when white light falls on the glass medium it will reflect colors so that only we are going to consider here in the spectrometer by using spectrometer we are going to find the wavelength of various spectral lines the next experiment is a uniform bending so here in the second cycle we are having a uniform bending and the non uniform bending so both are comes under young's modulus we can able to see here experiment number 7 and experiment number 9 uniform and non uniform so these are uniform bending and non uniform bending is from modulus of elasticity as i just study shown in the cycle 1 the second experiment horizon pendulum so this is also modulus of elasticity rigidity modulus but here the modulus of elasticity is young's modulus young's modulus means linear changes we are going to measure the linear wise change length wise change so it's young's modulus here in young's modulus we are having a uniform and a non uniform bending uniform bending means equal mass we have to upload the equal mass on both the side non uniform bending means we are going to load the weight at the center only one uh, just uh, type of weight we subject that to at the center of the medium here only at the center of the uh, scale we are going to load the weight but here in the uniform bending we are going to load the weight on the either side both the side both the side that's why it's uniform at the center means non uniform then we are going to measure the viscosity of the given liquid by uh, just a burette method graduated burette method and uh, finally the last experiment is feel along the axis of the coil so we are going to measure the resistivity of that medium so in addition to this cycle 1 consisting of a five experiment cycle 2 consisting of another five experiment so totally we are going to have a 10 experiments in addition to this we have to study uh, two value added experiments that the two value added experiments here resistance by ohms law by using ohms law as we know ohms law is v is equal to ir so by using ohms law we have to measure the resistance of the given medium and uh, finally we are going to study the error analysis because uh, the error calculation the error analysis is very very important in uh, uh, producing the products so what are the products uh, have uh, produced or developed by the industries uh, uh, finally they will uh, go for the quality check quality check so that the quality analysis only uh, make that product whether it's uh, suitable for to deliver or uh, not so here we are going to consider that error analysis so how we are going to measure the errors so here the error analysis is measured with the help of a basic instruments we are not in a industry so we are a student we are studying a undergraduate so for undergraduate students for a study these all 10 experiments we are going to use a vernier caliper and screw gauge as the instrument by using that instrument we are going to measure the error analysis so this is our content so totally we are going to consider a 12 experiments for first cycle 5 for second cycle 5 in addition to this we are having two value added experiment one is a resistance of uh, by ohms law second uh, error analysis so let's start our uh, today's uh, class with the basic instrument 
uh, you can able to see here basic instruments the most general used experiments in all the physics laboratory so these instrument are very useful for all the experiment to measure their parameters so we are going to consider two basic instruments one is a vernier caliper and the second one is screw gauge so what is the objective of this vernier caliper what is the aim we can say why you are we are using this vernier caliper in simple way we can say that it is used to measure the internal or external diameter of the given object if you are going to consider a cylinder so we can measure the inner diameter of the cylinder and also we can measure the outer diameter of the cylinder so not only the diameter but also we can measure the depth the depth of the cylindrical medium for example if you are going to consider a beaker for example that beaker is a 250 ml beaker so in that 250 ml beaker i am going to pour 100 ml of liquid i want to measure the depth so with the help of the uh, vernier caliper we can measure the depth also instruments here vernier caliper so these are our consideration by using this vernier caliper we can measure the diameters or we can in simple way say that we can measure the dimensions the dimensions is the common word used but the specific word is the diameter inner diameter outer diameter and also the depth by using a screw gauge we measure the thickness of the given material the thickness of the given material is measured by using the screw gauge so for a today's class we are going to study the basic instruments so these a basic instrument is nothing but vernier caliper and the screw gauge so let's see the uh, detailed about the vernier caliper what is this vernier caliper a vernier caliper it is a tool or we can say that it is an instrument which attain the much accurate value so it is a tool which attain that much required accuracy so we know that uh, we are uh, having uh, many uh, just uh, measuring instruments by which we can get the values also but we here we need an accuracy so for to get an accurate result for to measure the accurate value for the accuracy we are using the tool it's called vernier caliper who introduced this uh, vernier caliper who is the inventor for vernier caliper the vernier caliper was invented by french mathematician and also physics perari vernier so in the year of 1631 so by using this uh, instrument we are going to measure the accurate value so this is the objective we are going to discuss about the first basic instrument that is vernier caliper vernier caliper it is a tool which attained that much required accuracy it was uh, invented by french mathematician perari vernier in the year of uh, 1631 by using this instrument we can measure the exact or uh, accurate value sorry yeah hmm. so let's see the vernier caliper you are seeing the instrument so this instrument is called vernier caliper so the vernier caliper basically consisting of two scales the scales are two one is a main scale and another one is the vernier scale 
So we are having a two different type of uh, scales in the vernier caliper. One is a main scale and another one is the vernier scale. The main scale is the linear one. The main scale is the linear one. And uh, also the main scale is the fixed scale. The main scale is the fixed scale. What is this fixed scale? See, we are not able to move. We are not able to move the scale. To measure the readings, to find the difference, we have to uh, move these jaws. We are having a jaws, upper jaw as well as the outer jaw. So here we are having a screw. So this is nothing but a micrometer screw. So by using this screw, we can fix the object tightly between this jar. So we can release, relax the screw as well as we can tighten the screw to move the jars. When we move the uh, just jars, the scale which move under motion is the vernier scale. So the vernier scale is the moving scale here. Main scale is the fixed scale here. The vernier caliper basically consisting of two scale. One is a main scale and the another one is the vernier scale. Main scale is a linear scale, fixed scale. Vernier scale is the movable scale. Here in the main scale, we can able to see the graduation. We are having the upper graduation region and also we are having lower graduated region. The upper graduated region are shown in inches. The lower graduated region are shown in centimeters. So if you want to measure the upper jaw, if you are going to consider the upper jaw, we have to consider this reading. If you are going to consider the lower jaw, so we have to consider this reading. So here it's uh, mentioned in uh, inches and also in centimeter, the fixed scale, main scale or in the inches and the centimeter. So for our uh, laboratory work, we are going to consider only these uh, lower jaws. We are not going to consider the upper jaws. So for our consideration, a scale is a centimeter. We can use the value in terms of centimeter or uh, in terms of millimeter. So these are consideration. Okay. So these are all the uh, basic parts of the vernier caliper. So the vernier caliper consisting of totally six parts. Six parts are there in the vernier caliper. One is upper jar, lower jar, second part, lower jar, uh, screw, third, then the scale, it's in inches, centimeter. And finally, the last part is the metal strip. So at the back side of this vernier, uh, back side of this vernier, we are having a metal strip. When we move this vernier scale, when we move the vernier scale, we can able to see that a metal strip is coming out. So with the help of that metal strip, see we can able to see here, uh, when the jaws are closed, When these jaws are closed, uh, we are not able to see that metal strip here, the last component. But when the jaws are opened, when the jaws are opened, we can able to see that metal strip is uh, just uh, showing outside. It's outside. So with the help of this metal strip, we can measure the depth of the cylindrical medium. So whatever the depth, if you want to measure, the depth can be measured with the help of this cylindrical medium. We can measure the depth in terms of a centimeter or we can measure the depth in terms of millimeter or we can measure the depth in terms of meter. So it uh, depends upon our convenient so we can measure the depth of the medium. The least count of this vernier caliper here is uh, 0 0.1 millimeter. So on the vernier scale itself you can see the value. So when you are going to get the vernier scale, when you are going to collect this vernier scale instrument from the uh, instructor or from the faculty in your laboratory, 
so before going to proceed the procedure it mentioned as 0.1 mm 0.1 mm scale is here so we have to assume that the values are mentioned here in the millimeter and uh, we can consider the another scale that should be in the range of 0.1 cm so there are a different uh, type of uh, scales are in physics laboratory see here we are having only the lower graduation so we are having only the lower graduation so that too they have mentioned in terms of millimeter but in this previous slide we can see here we are having a two types of graduations the graduations are made on the upper side and also the graduation made on the lower side see 19 percentage of the physics laboratory instrument vernier caliper instrument contains both the lines so in our physics laboratory so most of the uh, instrument is uh, looks like this only look like this only so this is the change we have to know before getting the instrument you have to check the graduation whether the graduation is on the both the side second uh, we have to check the least count so the least count uh, it's a millimeter or a centimeter you have to be while receiving the vernier caliper so objective already i have mentioned it is uh, used to calculate very accurate linear measurements it is used to measure the diameter of a round and a cylindrical object so the diameter of the round and the cylindrical object are measured by fixing the jaws we are having two types of jaws upper jaw and the lower jaw if you want to measure the diameter that is external diameter so we have to consider the lower jaw if suppose you are in position to measure the internal diameter that time you have to consider the uh, upper jaw so with the help of these uh, jaws lower and the upper we measure internal as well as the external diameter and also we can measure the depth of the object depth of the object so this is the objective see i have taken some uh, pictures see here from this picture we can able to see that they are uh, measuring the inner diameter of the beaker the inner diameter of the beaker is uh, measured by using vernier caliper uh, see uh, uh, just he pressing uh, the button here by pressing this button we can uh, uh, move the jar sorry we can move the uh, just a vernier scale so when the scale is uh, just a fixed when the scale is a fixed uh, then you have to just uh, press this button and uh, you have to make that uh, scale to move see here they have measured the inner diameter so for to measure the inner diameter of the beaker we are using the upper jar upper jar see to measure the uh, just uh, outer diameter to measure the outer diameter i have taken a screw here we can able to see that so by using this lower jaws by using this lower jaws they measuring the outer diameter so for everything we have to consider the scale readings with the help of this uh, scale reading very near as well as the main scale we can uh, find uh, how much the diameter whether it's internal or the external so here the picture shows the measurement of the outer diameter is measured by using the lower jaws uh, see here when we place the uh, vernier caliper vertically and uh, when we uh, move the jaws when we uh, just uh, expand the jaws we can able to see the metal strip as i already informed that we are having a metal strip on the back side of the vernier caliper so this is a metal strip is used to measure the depth of the medium so here they have taken a liquid 
So the liquid is uh, filled up to some level. To measure the uh, depth, they are using this metal strip. So basically, by using this vernier caliper, we measure uh, the internal diameter, we measure external diameter, and also we measure the depth. So for to show the objective, I have taken this strip, three figures. In addition to this, so where are we are using this vernier caliper? This vernier caliper is used in many applications. For example, in education purpose, uh, at school level and at college level, we are using this uh, vernier caliper. They are using this vernier caliper in the uh, scientific research and development laboratories. Scientific research and labs, we are using this vernier caliper. Because we are using this vernier caliper to measure the length of the product. So what the product they have going to manufacture, what the product they have invented. So to measure the length, to measure the diameter, they can consider this small instrument, vernier caliper in scientific research labs. Third, we are using this vernier caliper in machinery. So in industries also, we are using this vernier caliper. Why we are using this? So I have shown a net. I have measured the uh, diameter of the net. So to measure the diameter of the net, the outcome product made by the uh, manufacturing companies, to check the diameter, we can use the vernier caliper. And also to check the accuracy, the main purpose of using this vernier caliper is to measure the accuracy. I already informed that the accuracy is the important term here in vernier caliper because there are many instruments uh, by using the thread also, normal thread also, without any instrument, we can take a thread and we can just we mount the thread over the material and we can measure the length. From that length, we can go for the diameter. From the diameter, we can go for the radius. So there, we can't able to uh, search for a good accuracy. But to measure the good accuracy, we are using this vernier caliper. The third medium, we are using the vernier caliper in industries. We are using this vernier caliper in medicine field also, in order to perform a diagnosis and surgeries. Finally, we are using this vernier caliper in aerospace field also. So for an aerospace limited, for an aerospace industry, the product which they are manufacturing, that should be an error free. So for to measure that error free measurements, they are using this vernier caliper. So these are all the uses of the vernier caliper. They used in education purpose. They used in scientific research labs. They used in industries. They used in medical field. And also they used in aerospace field. So I have taken uh, some slides. Uh, see here we can uh, be able to uh, see the uh, measurements uh, by using the vernier caliper. See they are measuring the length of the uh, newborn baby leg. They are measuring the length of the uh, just uh, newborn baby leg. They are uh, measuring the parameters because to undergo the operation or uh, for any uh, uh, plastic surgery, so they need an accurate measurement. So they are using this vernier caliper here. And also we are using this uh, vernier caliper in the uh, dental uh, surgery purpose also. We can able to see the uh, examples. I have taken only a few. There are a lot of examples, uh, usage of vernier caliper in the medical field. So these uh, industrial application, the vernier caliper, how they are used in industry. If suppose uh, if we are making an, uh, a screw, see, to measure the uh, diameter of the screw, we are using this vernier. We are making an, a wheel uh, grid. So to measure the uh, diameter of that uh, wheel grid, we are using vernier. See, here we have manufactured a small screw, for example, that screw head diameter also is measured with the help of the vernier. 
and also we have measured a, uh, just a internal diameter of the ring by using this vernier caliper so the vernier caliper is a basic simplest experiment instrument by which we can measure a more accurate value of the manufacturing products here the slides from the industrial side and finally i have taken aerospace application so as we informed that studied known that zero free error so there should not be any error in the manufacturing of the aero flying products so for the more accuracy for to know the immediate result uh, we can use this uh, vernier caliper so this is a simple and basic instrument we can hold anywhere it will uh, very less only weight less weight only so we can hold this uh, uh, anywhere uh, very frequently so this is the last uh, application i have taken here industrial side sorry aerospace side so in our laboratory what of this uh, vernier caliper for example in young modulus experiment young modulus means linear changes for young modulus we are going to use this meter scale so with the help of uh, this uh, vernier caliper we are going to measure this breadth we are going to measure this breadth so the breadth is measured with the help of this vernier caliper in our laboratory now we are in the calculation part how we are going to calculate the value we are going to start our calculation now how this uh, vernier caliper is uh, used in the laboratory before going to the calculation first we have to know the least count the least count already i have mentioned that the least count can be uh, just measured or the least count can be no from the instrument itself so they mentioned that least count value in the instrument itself hello don't talk please here yeah, the least count is 0.1 mm for our consideration or uh, we can uh, convert i can convert this uh, to 0.1 cm what is this least count least count is the smallest value that we can measure from the device please 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 devahar please mute your microphone i will mark as absent those who are making disturbance in the class so the smallest value that uh, can measure from the A least count of a vernier caliper is given by the formula the formula is very simple smallest reading on main scale smallest reading on main scale divided by total number of a division on vernier scale so see the formula the least count of a vernier caliper is given by smallest reading on main scale we have to consider the main scale reading and the number of divisions on vernier scale to the number of division on vernier scale so this is the least count of the vernier caliper so here the calculation is made we are going to study this calculation in the next slide let's see what is mentioned here least count of vernier caliper is equal to 1 mm divided by 10 division see in the vernier scale we are having only 10 division the total number of division on the vernier scale division is nothing but the line so we are having there totally 10 lines that we have written here as a 10 division but in the main scale it is a graduated more it is graduated in terms of centimeter and also it graduated in terms of inches if we are going to consider the lower jar we have to consider the a uh, scale in centimeter or a millimeter so from that centimeter or millimeter scale 
we have to consider the smallest reading that the smallest reading is nothing but here they have taken only first line that first line is 1 mm 1 mm divided by 10 division is 0 0.1 mm so the least count of a vernier caliper is measured as 0 0.1 mm we are going to see how this measurement is made from the next slide see i have taken the vernier caliper as i said we are having two types of scale one is a main scale and another one is vernier scale main scale is a fixed scale the vernier scale is the mobile scale what to measure this least count value 0 0.1 millimeter i am going to consider only the first reading of i have taken this main scale and i have taken this smallest reading so this is the smallest here is a graduate Hello, is it audible? Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Audible. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, what we are doing to find this least count calculation, the value least count is equal to 0 0.1 millimeter. So, in this previous slide, I have shown the formula smallest reading on the main scale. The smallest reading on the main scale is I have taken the first line. The first line so this is the first line value is nothing but one millimeter the smallest reading on the main scale divided by total division on the vernier scale so in the vernier scale we can able to see totally we are having 10 division so one divided by 10 division is equal to 0 0.1 millimeter so this is the way we are going to calculate this least count value least count value so we can able to see here a uh, single division i have taken i have mentioned that value as 1 mm because the value is graduated here uh, from a 0 to 10 mm so each is nothing but 1 mm 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we are having 10 millimeter here we are taking only the 1 millimeter 1 millimeter is the smallest reading on the main scale. See here on the vernier, there are totally 10 division. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So don't consider this 0. Start from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can able to uh, see the main scale division. 9 main scale division is coincide with the 10 vernier scale division. 9 main scale division is uh, coincide with the 10 vernier scale division. So this is also the uh, one of the important parameter here in the vernier caliper. Someone will ask you in the examination, uh, can you able to see the exact coincidence between the main scale and the vernier scale? So that time you have to say that 9 main scale 9 main scale uh, value, 9 main scale uh, reading coincide with the 10 vernier scale division. 9 main scale reading coincide with the 10 vernier scale division. So that we can able to see here. 0 to 10. Here is 0 to 9. So these are changes. So the 
least count value is calculated by using this assumption. Yeah, but the same one, but measure the reading. So important step. Uh, if you are uh, in a physics laboratory, uh, if you are going to uh, measure the length of the uh, scale, for example, if you are going to measure the breadth of the scale, the side of the scale. So for to measure the breadth of the scale, you can consider the vernier caliper. So initially the vernier caliper jaws are closed. Initially the vernier caliper jaws are closed. So when the two jaws are closed with each other, when the two jaws are closed with each other, when there is no gap, that time we can able to see that. So this zero of the main scale is exactly coincide with this zero of the vernier scale. When these two jaws are uh, just closed with each other, zero of the main scale is exactly coincide with the zero of the vernier scale. So if these are two scales are coinciding with each other means there is no error. There is no error. In a, most of the laboratory, the vernier caliper which we are using uh, will not have an error. Screw gauge only shows the error. The vernier caliper uh, almost uh, it will never shows the error. So that's why I have never uh, uh, shown the error calculation structure here. I have skipped that error calculation because uh, in our laboratory we are not having the error micro sorry error vernier caliper. So, but we have to know that how to measure the error when this zero of the main scale reading when it exactly coincide with this vernier scale then there will be no error. So for our lab, we are not having an error. Okay, let's start our reading. See, I have taken a steel bar. Example, I have taken a steel bar. I have just fixed that steel bar in the lower jar. In the lower jar. Now, after fixing the steel bar in the lower jar, we can able to see that the zero of these uh, vernier the zero of this vernier. So this zero is the reference. This zero is the reference. So we have to see where this zero is a pointing in the main scale. The zero is the reference. Sorry. Where this zero is a pointing in the main scale that we have to see. Let count the numbers zero. One, two, three, four, five, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Actually, the zero value, the zero value is lies between 14 and 15. The zero values lies between 14 and 15. See here, we are not having other graduation. We are having only a single graduation. So what we have to consider, that we have to consider the main scale reading as a 14 millimeter. We have to consider the main scale leading as 14 millimeter. So the 14 millimeter is measured from the main scale reading with the help of this zero vernier scale. That's why I have mentioned here the main scale leading is measured from the zero of the vernier scale reference. So this is the way how to measure the main scale leading. So we have to see this zero and we have to note where this zero is pointing here in the main scale. That reading we have to consider as a main scale reading. So the main scale reading I have taken as 14 millimeter. Next, we have to measure the coincidence from the vernier scale reading. We have to measure the vernier scale coincidence. So coincidence means exact same. So what we have to do? We have to check one by one, zero, one, two, three, four. See, this is a fourth reading. The fourth line of the vernier scale is exactly coinciding with the main scale. The exact coincident means it should be the same. The line should be the linear one. There should not be any changes, difference. On these uh, uh, just uh, sides, you can be able to see the difference. 
see the one one is not exactly coincide with there two is not also exactly coincide three is also not exactly coincide so the four is exactly coincide so we have to take this exact coincident value as the vernier scale coincidence so the number is 4 so this the uh, reading way if you know these are two then uh, this experiment is very easy we have to measure the main scale you can use uh, any object you can use a metal ball you can use a metal rod you can use a metal rectangular strip you can use a meter scale you can use a pencil you can use a eraser so for that we can measure the uh, diameter or for that we can measure the breadth so here we are measuring the breadth breadth of this steel bar so we have to fix the steel bar in between these two lower jar then we have to see the zero value so the zero is the reference the zero where is pointing in the main scale so it's exactly pointing in the 14th line so we have taken these as a 14 mm then after measuring the main scale consider the vernier scale we are having totally 10 division here we are going to measure only the coincidence not the reading so first stage is the coincidence so to measure the coincidence we have to check one by one don't see zero see one it's not coinciding matching two also not matching three also not matching but four it seems to be in a matched one when compared to all the readings so i have taken vernier scale division as the four so this is a way for the calculation now we can see the table column uh, what to do next see i have measured the main scale reading the main scale reading is a measured in millimeter the vernier scale coincidence is a measured in division see that only we did here the main scale reading is a measured in millimeter the vernier scale reading is a measured in division after knowing the vernier scale coincident after knowing this vernier scale coincident we have to convert this vernier scale coincident into vernier scale reading we have to convert vernier scale coincident into vernier scale reading for to make this coincident into reading we have to apply a formula that formula only i have shown here see main scale reading in millimeter vernier scale reading in a division formula formula for vernier scale reading vsr is equal to vsd vsd is the vernier scale coincident into least count i know the value vsd is 4 i know the least count is a 0.1 mm so the total value becomes vsr is equal to vsr is equal to 0.4 mm actually i have given here as a vsd it's a vsr vsr is equal to 0.4 mm then we have to measure the absorber reading after knowing the uh, vernier scale reading also then the third step is the absorbed reading for absorbed reading the formula is main scale reading plus vernier scale reading the main scale reading is 14 mm the vernier scale reading is 0.4 mm then add these two value here in the absorbed reading formula we get 14.04 mm next final step is the corrected reading the corrected reading is equal to absorbed reading plus or minus zero correction formula cr corrected reading cr is equal to absorbed reading plus or minus zero correction as i informed that for a vernier caliper we are not having an error 99 percentage we are not having error so errorless instruments only we are using in our laboratory so the error value is not mentioned there that's why we are just not error calculation so this is the formula cr is equal to or plus or minus zr now we know what is or absorbed reading we measured as 14.04 mm zero correction is nil then the corrected reading becomes 14.04 mm see 14.04 plus 0 mm is equal to 14.04 mm 
So this is the way to calculate the reading. So one second, I will show. We have placed a steel bar, and uh, we fixed. We placed the steel bar, and uh, we fixed. We have to first consider the zero of the vernier. So this is the reference, and uh, check this zero where it's located in the main scale. So this zero is located in between fourteen and fifteen. So I have to consider only the fourteen because it come behind the fourteen. But he never uh, touches the fifteen, so it's between fourteen and fifteen means we have to take the lower limit, fourteen only. So the fourteen millimeter. Second, after measuring the main scale, go for the coincidence. We are having totally ten division. Don't consider these center lines. So don't consider these center lines. You consider only the full readings, ten division. So from this ten division. Which line is exactly coinciding with the main scale? Here, yeah, the fourth line is only exactly coinciding with the main scale. I have written as four. Then, main scale leading in millimeter, vernier scale leading in division. Formula: We have to convert this coincident into the reading. The reading VSR equal to VSD into least count. VSD is a four. Least count is 0.1 millimeter, so it becomes VSR is equal to 0.4 millimeter. Then the absorber reading formula: absorber reading is equal to MSR plus VSR. MSR is a 14 millimeter, VSR is a 0.4 millimeter. Add these two values, we get 14.04 millimeter. Final is the correction reading. So here the correction is nothing but based on the error, but for very near we are not having an error, so the error is considered as a nil. But in general we are having three types of error: zero error, positive error, negative error. Zero error means uh, main scale of the zero should be exactly coincident with the very near. Here that only happening, so that wise I have taken uh, zero error as a nil. So zero correction is equal to absorber plus or minus. Uh, Zero correction, so we can write that absorber reading is equal to 14.04 nil correction. Therefore, corrector reading is equal to 14.04 plus zero millimeter. Corrector reading is equal to 14.04 millimeter. So these are final result. See the steps. How many steps we just passed and we came for the final result. So this is the way we have to measure the readings for our. Uh, material which given to you by using this vernier, you have to consider at least the five readings in the laboratory by using this instrument. So this is the tabular column. What I have shown in the previous class that we are going to uh, write in this tabular column to find the breadth of the given beam. So I have measuring the breadth of the uh, steel bar by using vernier. Least count 0.1 millimeter, 10 power minus 3 meter. Zero uh, error, no error because the main scale is exactly coincident with the vernier scale. Zero, nil. When there is no error, then the correction is also not applicable. So we have to mention as a nil. Then main scale leading measured as 14. Vernier scale coincidence measured as four. Then converting the vernier scale coincidence into vernier scale reading. 0.4 multiplying by least count 0.4 then the absorber reading formula msr plus vsr msr is a 14 vsr is a 0.4 so 14.04 and finally the corrected reading we are not having the error here so no value is for error the direct result we can write here 14.04 so this is the calculating method by using this vernier caliper For uh, various uh, types of the beams, whether it's a cylinder, whether it's rectangular, whether it's oval, whether it's a circle, whatever they give, for that you can measure the diameter as well as you can measure the breadth. So, and finally, uh, just uh, this uh, worksheet example I have taken. See here, I have taken some selective region. We have to see this zero. Zero of the vernier. So you can able to know that. So this zero of the vernier is not 
coinciding with this line is not coinciding with this line so the limit is between 2 and this line the limit is between 2 and this line so we have to consider this value as a 2 mm consider this value as 2 mm then we have to make the coincidence value so here the coincident value we see here in the seventh line the seventh line is exactly coincidence so we have to write that seven division here see here i have elaborated extended this one we can able to see the uh, main scale leading the main scale leading is a 2 and the vernier scale coincidence here is the 7 so these are the uh, just uh, example uh, just please uh, uh, note this uh, please uh, note this structure i am giving you a few minutes uh, you just mention the main scale and you have to mention the vernier scale so this is the exercise chart so those who are uh, viewing this uh, slide i have shown totally nine different 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 uh, uh, readings here so i will uh, ask anyone and i will ask them to uh, say the, what is the main scale and uh, i will ask them to say what is the vernier scale see here it's 8 it's 8 so it's uh, in between 8 and 9 sorry it's 9 but it's in between 8 and 9 so the each value here is 0.1 each value is 0.1 see 9 means it will be 8.9 8.7 8.6 8.5 so the main scale for the first exercise is 8 point hello any doubt so 8.5 is the main scale then we have to go for the coincidence value so here the coincident value is a 2 for the first one for the second one the main scale is a 0 the main scale is a 0 it's uh, it's uh, see the limit here 0 to 1 so 0 to 1 means each division is 0.1 each division is 0.1 so here the main scale is a 0 the vernier scale uh, coincident uh, is a uh, Six. The Vernier scale coincidence here is six. For the third one, the main scale is a six point four. Six point four because uh, this is a six point five. This line is a six point five. So the zero of the Vernier scale is locating here. So it's a six point four is the main scale under the coincident that we have to uh, measure. see the coincident uh, is 1 2 3 the coincident is 3 so like this kindly just find the value for 4 5 6 7 8 9 and uh, wait i will ask you can you able to see the screen anyone only one representative any one representative can you able to see the screen yes sir yeah ma so good so please uh, uh, find the main scale and the vernier scale please find the main scale and the vernier scale see you have to see the main scale reading up and you have to find the vernier scale reading from the down main scale leading is uh, pointed in a different different position here the vernier scale is also in the different position you have to say what is the main scale leading and you have to say what is the vernier scale coincident so i am giving some time so you can draw these in your uh, paper also or uh, make an answer you have to write the main scale leading is equal to value some value 
when is can coincident is equal to some value that you have to mention so here for this i will write uh, main scale leading is equal to 8.5 when is scale coincident uh, is a 2 like that you have to readings and you have to say that i think we are uh, going beyond our time otherwise you people uh, copy this one i will uh, share this uh, slide also i will share this image also to you all to whatsapp so just uh, you uh, find the answer and uh, keep the answer so in the next laboratory class uh, before going to the second instrument uh, we find the solution for this i will ask one by one randomly i will ask the name that particular student want to say the answer for example if i if i ask uh, anraj uh, give the solution for uh, uh, sixth exercise so anraj ready to answer the main scale leading here is uh, you have to answer that uh, 3.9 or 3.8 3.8 is the main scale leading and anraj ready to answer the when is scale coincident uh, here is a uh, 4 3 yeah ma sorry 3 3 3 good good very good 3 so this is the observation capacity so i hope that uh, you all are concentrating more so happy to see this very good so with this uh, we wind up our class if you have any doubt you can ask your doubt so i have given the questions also for a theory 10 questions i have given i have mentioned so i will start the theory theory lecture uh, once i just complete the questionary session i want to ask the question randomly uh, you have to answer for that then only i will start the remaining topic so with this uh, Uh, thank you all uh, we can wind up now thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you so much thank you